I've heard pastors, oh, Abram's being such a great father to Lot, and Lot's just ready to leave the nest, and this is so great. No, this isn't great. Hey, it's Rachel. Today on Crack Your Bible, we are going to be talking about mo money, mo problems, and nobody knows that better than Abraham. Now, before we get started, make sure you hit subscribe with the bell with a parenthesis so you're notified of a new gospel message because, of course, Satan and YouTube and Google, they don't want you to know the scripture. So, if you want to be notified of a new gospel message, you'll have to hit subscribe with the bell with a parenthesis, and let's get started. Now, it has been 15 whole videos videos since we were back on track talking about Abram on Mondays because for everybody who has recently joined us on Mondays usually we talk about the Bible going through chronologically and then on Wednesday and Friday I answer other stuff about other issues going on within Christianity and uh, the end times and you know whatever but you know we had Passover and that whole playlist that was 10 videos long I'll put the link up here and of course as usual all videos will be in the description box below so we had that and we've been talking about other things but we need to get back on track with Abraham because we can't neglect the Bible I know all the other stuff is really interesting but we also need to know the Bible so we're in Genesis 13 right now if you have not seen that playlist or those videos make sure you go check it out so that you can kind of get up to speed with where we are in the story now if you all remember back in Genesis 12 1 what did God tell Abram he said leave your people your country and your father's household and go to the land that I am showing you and what did Abraham do didn't do that well he partially followed through on the directions but he he kind of fudged a bit leave your father's household so that means leaving his nephew lot the son of his deceased uh brother haran back home did abram do that nope he did not so abram sets out with lot and his wife slash niece which we've already talked about not his sister in another video link it up here and they head out there's a famine they head down to Egypt they run some game they get a bunch of money from Pharaoh and Pharaoh was like just leave just get out and so they entered into Egypt they're pretty wealthy they had people they had animals they they're running a business this is like moving Amazon down south to Egypt and now once they get kicked out now they own Amazon and Google and Facebook they're just rolling in money all of a sudden they are so wealthy but instead of in technology products and things that will set up the Antichrist no they are just rolling in money in the form of cattle and livestock and just uh, different industries that you have surrounding herding herding h-e-r-d herding and um we see that now we are in genesis 13 and things are getting a little dicey between lot's herdsmen and abram's herdsmen and there are so many animals and so many things that are just bringing in positive cash flow that the land can't support both Lot and Abram. And this is causing problems because their employees, the people that work under them, are beginning to fight. Hey, get your animals out of this place. These are my animals. This is my grazing spot. Y'all need to leave. You need to find another spot. And it is causing problems. So Lot goes to Abram, and here we are in the story. Abram is like, hold on, hold on, hold on. We need to separate and we need to split apart so that you go, you can have your space. I can have my space. Our herdsmen aren't going to go head to head, toe to toe. We can just, you know, live in peace. And this is, this is not something that's just like, oh, okay, like now just I'll, I'll move. No, this is a huge undertaking. These are negotiations that Abram is having with Lot. And we can tell that Lot is upset because Abram reminds Lot, hey, we're kinsmen. He said, let there be no strife between you and me and between your herdsmen and my herdsmen, for we are kinsmen. That's Genesis 13, 8. Lot's upset. This, these are the words of somebody who is trying to calm somebody down. Like, hey, hold on. I know you're upset, but remember, we're family here. Like, we don't need to be at each other's throats. And 
we see that Abram, he said, you know, if you want to go left, I'll go right. If you want to go right, I'll go left. You choose, Lot. You choose. Like, I'm going to let you choose which place that you want to go to. Now, we see that Abram's being very diplomatic. And we see that Lot, he acts just like you would expect a person to do. He looks out. Oh, this place looks bumping. This place looks lit. This place, this place looks like paradise over here. Oh, this place is watered like the Garden of Eden. So he sets out east toward the Jordan Valley, and he lives amongst their towns because he has many people underneath him as far as his business operations. So they spread out. By default, they call it him. He lives amongst their towns. His people, his clan, lives amongst their towns. And he moves his tent, his personal home, towards Sodom. Now, Abram, he is going to the land of Canaan. And this is, I mean, this is all technically Israel that we know of today. But there's something else that I want to point out because I've listened to other people preach on this message and they, they kind of spin it as like, oh, wow, look at Abram. He's such a loving father, blah, blah, blah. And you can just see how much he has a heart for Lot because, you know, he's raised him like a son. And it's like, hold on, hold on, like, hold on one second real quick because we've already talked about how Haran died. He is the brother of Abram who for all of you who don't know, became Abraham later on. His name changed from Abram to Abraham. And so Haran died. He had a son named Lot. And, you know, Abram was probably the younger or the youngest of Terah's sons. And that means that Lot and Abram were probably pretty close in age. Abram might have been slightly older than Lot. And you can just see in their interactions that it's more like a big brother type interaction than a father and son interaction. And you can see this because Lot is deferring to Abram, but Abram is treating Lot as an equal. Hey, you know, whichever way you want to go, I'm trying to calm you down. Like, hey, you know, we're family. We're family. Like, don't, don't be brash. Don't be uh, getting all upset or anything. And that is not how a father speaks to a son. That's more like a big brother to a younger brother type situations. And I, I say this because I speak from experience. It's because I am the oldest kid of four. And for half of my life, it was just me and my younger sister. And she's 28 years old. I'm 30. And then we have a brother who's 14. And then we have a younger sister who is 12. And we are all 100% siblings. My parents are just gross. Like, <sighs> that was so shocking when I found out they were having more kids. It's just like gross. But anyway, back to Abram and Lot. So they're clearly close in age. We know that Haran was Abram's brother and then you have Lot come around and you can just see in their interactions and how Abram is speaking to Lot that it's more like an older brother to a younger brother. And we know that Abram has no business telling Lot, oh, you know, you go this way or and I'll go the opposite way or vice versa. Abram has no business doling out land to anybody because it's not his land to give out. There's other people living in the land, and that land was never intended for Lot. That land was intended for Abram because God told Abram, leave your family, your people, and your country, and go to the land that I am showing you, the whole land of Canaan, the whole land of Israel. He didn't say that to Lot. That promise wasn't for Lot, so it's not for Abram to give to Lot. And we see he's trying to, oh, trying to be diplomatic, just like you would if you're in a fight with your sibling. I mean, I've been there. I fight with my sister all the time. But you can see that he's trying to be the peacemaker because he's treating Lot as a co-equal. And, you know, I have younger siblings and the ones that are 12 and 14, I don't treat them like that. I'm basically the parent and they're the kid because when they come to my house, I'm the adult and they're the kid. When I have my other sister who's 28 over, I don't tell her, hey, it's time for bed. You need to go brush your teeth, take a shower, and you need to hand me your phone because you're not going to be on your phone all night and then you're going to be tired in the morning when we got to go. Like, no, I only say that to my youngest siblings when they come to stay with me. They, they all live out of state, so when they're here, 
I'm the adult. So, you know, I have that more parent-child relationship with my siblings than I do sibling to sibling because they were born when I was 16 and 18 years old. But my other sister, you know, we're kind of co-equals even though I'm older and sometimes she does defer to me because I'm older. That is how we see Abram and Lot behaving. It's not a father-son thing. And people want to, I've heard pastors, oh, Abram's being such a great father to Lot and Lot's just ready to leave the nest and this is so great. No, this isn't great. It's not great because Abram disobeyed God. And because Abram disobeyed God, Lot is going to get hurt. Lot's daughters are going to get hurt. Lot's grandsons are going to get hurt. Lot's wife is going to die because Abram didn't obey God the first time. Because every time God tells us to do something, we, and I'm, I speak for myself included, we always think, oh, what about this? What about that? Oh, oh, I know God told me to do this, but let me make some sort of provision. I have 10,000 excuses. We see Abram did it, you know. Oh, I got to bring Lot along. He doesn't have anybody else. Sarai's going to need a male escort in case anything happens to me instead of God told me to do this and I'm going to do it in the exact way that God told me how to do it. If he told me to leave my father's household, I'm going to leave my father's household, which includes Lot. Lot didn't mess up here. Abram messed up. And you can try to be as diplomatic as you want to be, but it does not change the fact that you have disobeyed God and you're not going to be able to spin your way out of this where now it's going to be okay. Lot getting hurt, Lot's family getting hurt was not God's will. God's will was for Abram to obey God the first time and he didn't do it. So it doesn't matter how nice and kind Abram is to Lot and how deferential he is or how fair he's playing with Lot. The, the problem is Abram disobeyed God and it's going to cause problems. You can never out nice the fact that you disobeyed God. And I want you to remember this. When God tells you to do something, do it the way he told you to do it the first time or else you're going to have problems. God can always fix certain things, but it will never be the way that he originally intended them to be. God's plan is not for you to mess up and disobey and disobey and disobey and then, oh, God salvaged it. So, oh, this was God's plan. No, God's plan was for you to obey him right the first time. So I want you to remember that in the story of Abram and I would love it if you would like, subscribe, and share and I will see you later. Bye.